Hello, welcome back to Greta's Garden. Though growing my own vegetables is good for me in almost every way, my number one priority has always been to provide food for us, a lot of food for us. And in keeping with that, today is one of my days where I go around now, weather's here, a little windy, but uh, I'm starting to see my seedlings pop up uh, from direct seed, uh, some of the plants are just starting to take off from transplants and I'm starting to see the holes that I'm looking for because now it's time for me to maximize everything I can and look at the things that aren't going so well or the hindrances or the pests etc because it's all about getting the biggest bang for my buck here I need as much food as I can get to provide for our family year-round it's so windy I ran in to get my husband's half. Don't laugh at me. As I walk around today, I'll speak about what it is that I get up to, or my tips, I guess, for how I grow more food. I have some new corn starts here that, uh, well, they've been heavily wind blown because I'm hardening them off. It's a tough thing here. Uh, but I noticed where I planted initially six plants, I uh, don't have, I may have three remaining. Mice love to eat the small corn. So I've got a few more, those I'll put in, and then I'll see what I can put in between the corn. I have in my basket, I think, yes, some scarlet runner beans. Here you can see my suffering corn. There's only three left of the six. So uh, there's a little tail in there. That just, no, it's been eaten, see? So I'll replace a few and I'll keep going with the corn. I'll, when I go inside, I'll start some more seed. Now you may wonder, it's so windy out, why are you planting? It's always windy here. So when I go in, I will start some more corn seeds indoors. But uh, we only have a family of three, you see, so it's nice to stagger them or succession plant. And in the middle, because I can always add some poles here later, I may as well start some beautiful scarlet runner beans, mostly for how beautiful they are. I see nasturtiums here, plant one in between, and one down there, doesn't look good and maybe one by the pole, there we go. So in this bed, corn will come up, some scarlet runner beans, some nasturtium to make it beautiful, and I think I may even stick some carrots. I'm always looking for room for carrots. They don't take up much room. So I'll probably just along the line here put some carrot seeds in. Okay, I see my direct seeded rutabaga is coming up. That is wonderful. And I don't really see that I've interplanted anything here. I can't always remember. It's not good. But uh, because it's been so much rain here, incredible, we beat all records. This is um, some beets that I started indoors just for something to do. I don't normally do this, I direct seed, but I'll put some of these in here. I'll just put a few here. Now the next time that I come out, I'll see how everyone's doing and probably interplant something else. I don't follow the seed packs um, necessarily. They're a guideline. It's wonderful. I've said this before, but I'm not a farmer who's putting a huge field down. So, you know, those guidelines work great for that. Uh, you can play around and uh, stretch the spacings, the timings, and you'll learn as you go along what works best. So here, spacing-wise, well, I sowed these and started these in modules, which I don't normally do, but obviously I put a few seeds in there, and um, they, of course, are multi-seeded anyways. Here, I've got a lot. They'll be fine. 
they'll grow along uh, with each other happily. Now up in this bed I already know that the nasty wee mice have been having a field day with my brassicas, specifically my uh, broccoli and my cabbage. I anticipate this every year, I know. I do live by the rule that nature can take 30% of my yield and 70% for me. But nonetheless, you know, when you see them wiped out constantly, it gets a bit frustrating. So I overplant, or overseed rather, uh, my cabbage and broccoli specifically. Mice love them. I don't know what it is. They must be very tasty to them. My winter sowing that I do outside, you may have seen huge boon for me. It really helps because it starts, it doesn't just acclimate my seeds, my seedlings to, uh, you know, I don't require hardening off, but they're stronger, sturdier, and it gives them a better start. And sometimes the mice will leave those alone, more so than those I start inside, again, of my cabbage and such, that are weaker stemmed. Yeah, just tinier plants. They love those. I think they're tender for them and sweet and they love them. So I'm not going to, at this stage, uh, start more broccoli up there, I don't think, or cabbage. I have over seeded and over planted. So hopefully there's enough for us. In three weeks to a month, I will start more seeds for succession planting of those. But for now, my task is to think, what am I gonna fill those holes with whether the mouse has taken those out? And it's probably going to be seeds of my winter squash. Can never get enough winter squash because what a great storage vegetable to get you through all year. The hungry gap, everything just keeps on giving if you can grow enough of them. So I'll probably think of that. Some zucchini, we love zucchini. Uh, we love cooking them in, you know, 15 different ways. They're, they're very versatile, so I enjoy those. Maybe that. Fast growers. And maybe I'll just stick in some of the things that we do enjoy, such as beets, carrots, lettuce. It's uh, I won't do that yet. I'll hide lettuce under some of the higher plants. So I know where my brassicas and my Brussels sprouts are going to be. And where I'm filling in gaps, it will likely be some lettuce in there for some succession plants of lettuce, but they'll be slightly shade and a little cooler. Here's just one mice takedown. I continuously harvest. I do not believe at all in waiting for all of something to come to fruition uh, because I need it to eat regularly. I've already pulled lots of these and I've already got some on sale uh, replacements. They're half price now because these these uh, green onion sets is what I, I get for these um, are starting to you know show their signs of their budding and whatnot so you can get them half price right now. sign for me that my vegetables are going to grow well is my soil. How is it this year? Um, are there beds that are lacking? You know, for sure. Uh, but an indicator is the earthworms that I have. If I see a lot of earthworms this time of year, which is now where the wee worms have come out of their cocoons and the big worms, which hibernate deep down, have come up. I have had beds where I didn't see many worms. So it tells me it's lacking. So let's check this one out. Yes, I'm no dig, but this is just to show you. <laughs> of the raised bed I see some green onions lettuce various stages some beets uh, some holes in the beets 
and brassicas and a squash over here which he'll live on his own so why not fill in some carrots i can never get enough i have pelleted seeds so i know where they're going these green onions won't stay in here too long so you see i can get at least four more carrots right here pop up I could put more beets but I'm going to put a few carrots and then I've got this strip here there's nothing there I don't think the lettuce is going to interfere with a carrot coming up too much so I'm going to stick some more You can really maximize in between here. Carrot's going to go down deep. It won't affect the lettuce or much of these others. They're a long growing seed. 20 days to germinate. So they're not really going to interfere with this lettuce either. Uh, time wise. a lot more carrots to look forward to. I have some verbena here and one of my goals this year is to make things look a little bit more prettier and flowers help me to do that. So what have I got? Um, this is my garlic bed. It's not going to uh, come out till sometime in August and you know, it's, it's lovely, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but it could be better with just a little bit of flowers. I see I've got some nasturtium seeds coming up here that I planted earlier. And verbena, I think, can have a problem with spider mites and garlic repels them. But just a little pop of color in here. Um, I have a lot of roots I can already see of my garlic because it's very healthy. It won't hurt them. I'm. Uh, definitely planting in them but I do have very healthy garlic here in my maritime climate for a heart neck. Let's find another spot for this to pop. So soon hopefully I'll see some bits of color in my garlic bed. It's not about maximizing food so much but it does make me happy. And then of course vertical growing gives you more space, more food. I have to admit, I don't do a whole lot due to my winds, but where I can and where I think it might work or I'll come out and pick them up or whatnot, I've had many vertical pieces fall over. We can't get the cattle panels that I see the Americans get, but um, these work a bit. So I'm going to put some sugar snap peas, what have I got, what's the name? Cascadia sugar snap. I'm just going to put some of these here. There's just a random walking onion, but I have a melon here that I'm hoping to climb wherever he wants to go. And uh, that's a haluna melon and a watermelon. Now the wind is really doing a number on them. So I don't have the highest hopes for that, but all the more reason to get more food put peas in. I'm also going to put some scarlet runner beans here. They like to climb. They're pretty. And they'll fit right in. Now more than likely I will probably come out and uh, see what else can go in here. This is a great spot to tuck some lettuce in uh, once these grow. So later in the season, as some greenery hopefully is climbing up here, I'll get some 
succession plants of lettuce tucked in here. So that's some of the things I get up to, to maximize, get as much food as I possibly can. It's a serious mission. You know, I'm not getting younger. I'm 60 this year. <gasps> and money's always tight. It's critical for me to do this for my family. So we'll see how these work out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.